from the dark web to your radio dial. You are listening to CyberTalk Radio on News 1200 WOAI. Welcome to CyberTalk Radio. I'm your host, Brett Pyatt, a 20-year internet security veteran. And we're going to be talking about uh, Hallmark University's cybersecurity program, uh, which is a university here in San Antonio. For those of you listening uh, on iHeartRadio or uh, on the podcast streaming outside of there, if you're uh, looking to uh, learn about cybersecurity and uh, major in cybersecurity, get a degree in it, uh, stick with us through this program. I'm joined by the president of the university. So we, we have the expert here to talk about uh, what this program is, uh, why uh, they got it started, and uh, what they're uh, looking for in candidates. Uh, so, Brent, uh, thank you for joining uh, us on CyberTalk Radio here this week. And uh, go ahead and share with the audience a little bit about your background. How did you end up as a university president? <laughs> that's, that's a great question. Uh, I'm an electrical engineer, and uh, I started off building signal intelligence systems, direction finding, geolocation, and I was working for a neat nonprofit called Southwest Research Institute and uh, did a little project management work at uh, the university and just fell in love, just resonated with me uh, getting to uh, change lives instead of just work on hardware. And uh, that's how I came over to uh, higher education. Yeah. So in the university world, uh, rolling out a, a new degree program takes uh, some time and some planning. Uh, we're going to go through all, all of, of that uh, here. Uh, but I think uh, I first met as you, you were out recruiting for uh, to, to get some high school kids. So we've got uh, many listeners uh, that uh, are on Cyber Patriot teams. And if you're a parent out there and your uh, child is in high school or middle school in San Antonio and they're not on the Cyber Patriot team, um, it's uh, much better to play that than football. Um, there's scholarship opportunities available to colleges, uh, including uh, the one we'll talk about here today. If you're amazing at Cyber Patriot, just like if you're amazing at football, you can get a scholarship to college. But there's uh, 3 million jobs going to be out there in cybersecurity. There's not 3 million jobs in the NFL. Uh, there's not 3 million jobs in Major League Baseball. Uh, so if you want to major in something and get a scholarship in something where you're going to have um, effectively unlimited career opportunities from, from now through uh, your whole working uh, life, if you're out there as a high school or if you're working in something else right now thinking, you know what, it's time for me to go back to school, it's time for me to get a degree um, and really build a career and not just have a job, uh, cybersecurity is the place to go. If you are not going to be able to stick with us uh, through this full broadcast, we uh, put all of our uh, episodes up on our website at www.cybertalkradio.com. Uh, they'll go online uh, Tuesday after the broadcast here, so this will be November the 6th, uh, where this goes up on our website. It also goes on to uh, every podcasting service out there, and I issue a challenge to our listeners. If you have a podcasting service that you like uh, where you cannot find our program, uh, Reach out to us on Facebook or Twitter. Let us know. We will get you a CyberTalk Radio t-shirt, and we will get our content added to that uh, radio program. So, uh, Brent, for the, the background, um, which, which university are we talking about here, and, and kind of how did it all get started as well? So we're talking about Hallmark University. Uh, we just entered our 50th year, and we started off in aerospace um, and building uh, airframe and power plant technicians. It's a uh, FAA uh, track FA license is the outcome there. A uh, really cool program and uh, expanded into uh, there was a lot of electronic manufacturing going on in San Antonio back in the uh, 80s and, and 90s. And so we were supporting that as, as that industry changed. We switched over to uh, computer networking. And as the uh, industry changed, one of our core values or uh, character traits is agility. And we know the environment's changing. So we uh, ended up in uh, IT and cybersecurity as the uh, landscape really changed here in San Antonio. Yeah, and now you, you've got kind of the, the combination of the two uh, out in the west side of town here, Port San Antonio, where they're um, talking aerospace and cybersecurity all together as one. If you uh, wanted to learn more about that, we've had uh, Jim Pershbach, the CEO of the Port on the program. You can listen to uh, his whole story about what's going on over there. But uh, it sounds like you guys, uh, with being able to have folks majoring in both both of those things um, at the same university, a chance for uh, people to really learn and understand how cybersecurity impacts some of those uh, long-term systems. Yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, as a university, our mission, we are only in high growth, high demand areas. We're not a liberal arts university. Uh, we only focus on professionally focused degrees, and we do it about half the time. And so 
you know, if, if cyber wasn't a big deal, we wouldn't be there. Yeah. And uh, whatever next thing happens out in industry, that is a high growth, high demand area, we're going to be there as well. Yeah. yeah. So you, you guys also have healthcare programs. We have healthcare, nursing, and, yeah. and uh, business as well, where things all kind of converge together. You have business analytics, data analytics. Um, and managing all those high demand areas. Yeah, it's a, another one uh, from a cybersecurity professionals. If you're hanging out on campus, learn as much as you can about the the healthcare careers and the health things going on because uh, our healthcare systems need lots of cybersecurity. That's right. Medical records are one of those those special things that um, credit card number. If that gets exposed, you can cut the credit card up. You can issue a new credit card number. But if your your medical records get exposed, medical records have facts in them, and you can't just take a, a shredder to facts facts are are what they are so uh yeah i mean this i think uh, the the opportunity uh the, to be in cybersecurity at hallmark you're going to be around folks that um, are working on other business professionally focused areas that are in the need of cybersecurity uh as well as just independently on that that cyber program where it really applies to every industry but some of the ones where there's both job demand here in the San Antonio area and across the country and industries in specific uh, high demand need for cyber professionals yeah uh you know in addition to having that uh, cross training our our faculty we we have a lot of adjunct faculty because we have both a day and an evening uh, program as well as online and so that gives us the uh, luxury of working together with professionals in the cyber industry who are out there protecting our, our IT assets during the day, and then they come in and teach our students at night. So having that relevant, that uh, very current experience in the classroom is is really, really valuable. It, it's, it's important to not just know uh, the science behind it, but to know the tools that, that everybody uses and to, to know what the bad guys are doing uh, on a day-to-day -day basis. Because I mean, when you talk about a changing landscape, I mean, there's nothing, than, I don't think there's anything more quickly changing than, than cyber. Yeah. And it's a, it, one of the, the things I want to make sure we did talk about here during the, the program is that we, I'd mentioned briefly at the start on, on how hard it is to come up with curriculum to get a whole new degree program going, but the, the cyber world. Yeah. How, how do you guys work through the, the constant um, change in what needs to be covered in the curriculum? Well, I, I, I think we take a dual business uh, plan approach or, or do, dual business model. So we have the clear customer that's our student, and they're coming to us for a career is, is the number one thing. They're going to get a degree. They're going to get some certifications. But really, the thing that they're after is a career. So that really drives us to take a second business model approach, which is where our customer is industry and the product that we deliver is our graduate. And so when we do that, that means we have to engage with industry um, very uh, in, a, in a very low level because they they want exactly what they are looking for out of our graduates. And so that means they're they're telling us they're designing. I'm I'm an engineer, so I'm used to yeah. talking to to customers. What do you want? What's your requirements matrix? And then how do we produce that? How do we manufacture that? And and so they're telling us the skills that they need. They're telling us the the degree level that they want, but they're also telling us. Uh, the, the tools that they're using here, here's, here's the tool set that we're using. Here's our, our processes. And because all, often there's not a textbook that's describing that yet. Uh, there, I mean, paradigm shift, you know, drastically in cyber and, you know, publishers love updating their textbooks, but they're still not updating fast enough to stay up. So we have to stay very, very engaged with industry. You know, we, we did that as, as we started our, our cybersecurity degree years ago. And we brought in a, a focus group as an advisory group of uh, made up of healthcare. You, you mentioned that uh, CIOs yeah. uh, from the largest uh, uh, health systems in in town or in the area. We had uh, active duty. We had DOD contractors. We had uh, people from the finance uh, industry. And fortunately, in San Antonio, we have some amazing yeah. industry to look to. And so they came in. They said, here's what we want. Here's what we're looking for. These are the, the types of uh, skills that we're looking for in knowledge areas. It was yeah. surprisingly deep. So uh, outside of, of skills and knowledge, uh, I suspect those employers are coming to you asking about character, background. How do you develop yeah. the soft skills? How do you build, uh, develop the ability for people to work on teams? Yeah. You know, as the, the, having that business model where industry is customer, we, we ask this question, what do you care about more? Do you care about character or skills more? Which is the most important number one thing? 
And we've asked hundreds of employers that question, and we have yet to have a single employer say skills was number one. They all say character. We need the skills, but to be honest, we know what we do. So if we get somebody with this character thing, we really don't know how to develop character, but we can show them what we do. And so they're looking for character. And, and I think we really miss it in higher ed, um, reflecting that type of priority. We focus so much on a skills gap or a knowledge gap. But if there's a character gap that walks in the door, we, we usually throw our hands up in, in higher ed. And, and I think, uh, you know, the military gets it. Uh, yeah. when, you, when you go through basic, they're, they're, they're not sh- teaching you to shoot a gun first. They're actually driving home character. They're driving home integrity and, and being a servant, you know, not, not just not, not a slave, but being a servant. You know, you, yeah. you live your life. Uh, for other people. And, and so we we're really trying to reflect that character development and it's, it's really having a, a great payoff. Uh, we've never had a student come back and say, you know, when, when I learned how to configure that Microsoft exchange server, it really changed my life. But, but they do come back <laughs> and, and, and they do say, you know, what changed my life is when I learned how to live my life flowing out. Uh, I realized um, I wasn't a great dad or I wasn't a great person. And now my life has changed because of that. And the cool thing is, is that employers love it. You, you, you get a, you get better jobs. You get paid more when you have that character piece, not just the skill. Yeah, no, for, for certain. And as an employer, uh, myself, that's uh, critical, uh, because we, we all want to empower folks now to be able to go do the right thing. And in order to have that internal compass to do the right thing, they, they have to have that. Um, that's a, a tricky one to train and develop uh, in the work environment. Yeah. You know, technology is not good or bad in itself. It's, it's a multiplier. It's a tool. It, it leverages what the person is. And so technology, this is why we need cybersecurity. Technology in the hands of somebody without character is very dangerous. Right. And, and so uh, that's why cybersecurity professionals are needed, but not just somebody who's skilled because that person with the skills that they don't have the character, man, you're, you're trusting your most valuable assets um, and you're putting it out there with technology. So in cyber, especially it's uh, character is, is super valuable. Oh, for sure. Yeah. With the, with the, uh, the skills and then no ethics or low ethics, um, you, you, you just, yeah, you're actually training uh, someone to be dangerous uh, f- to society, which is hopefully, uh, yeah, what's what's not happening out there? Um, we've we've got enough of the bad guys, and I've I've talked recently about um, where we're headed on some of the artificial intelligence and with botnets and the theft of computers. Um, the numbers advantage of good guys versus bad guys is is kind of in trouble in a way because bad guys get to steal computers. So if they've got a hundred million bots out there, that's I don't know th- somewhere between twenty five and maybe seventy five billion dollars worth of capital. And then a billion to two billion dollars of electricity every month to power it. It's hard for the good guys to compete with that. So um, if your computer is not patched and updated, please patch and update your computer. Because if not, there's a chance that bad people are using it to do bad things and, and gain an advantage on all of us. If you're not sure how to patch and update it, um, Brent would be happy to uh, introduce you to some of the graduates, and uh, they'll get your computers patched, uh, updated, and they would be uh, looking for a job out there in cybersecurity. So. If you have uh, questions uh, for Brent or, or myself or uh, wanted to uh, ask the program anything else, you can ask questions via our website, Facebook page, uh, Twitter as well. And uh, Hallmark is out there. I've seen them uh, across all these places as well. So you can you can reach out to the university and they will, will get back to you uh, and answer what you have to ask us. So, Brent, you said you went from an engineering background now. Uh, into uh, to leading the university. And the so university has been around for, for 50 years. So where's it going over the, the next 50? Engineers have to plan a long time in advance. So I'll, I'll throw one out here to you. It's like, where are you guys going? So you've got business programs, aerospace, cybersecurity, uh, but uh, from a, a growth perspective, from a, a goals perspective. Well, I can, I can only answer part of that. Uh, stay tuned for a lot of great new things coming out from Hallmark University. Um, I, I mentioned a little bit earlier, as far as uh, areas, the uh, data science and business analytics, you know, it's, we, we get this Google uh, mindset and all this data, everything's being recorded now, but now what do we do with it? Yeah. And, and so you've got to have uh, high order math. You've got to have database skills and, and for, for a business leader to be able to make decisions now on all this data, now you got to have folks who are expert in being able to use all that data. So it's not just somebody at Google where, you know, positions at Google where you need these big data type jobs. Everybody's going to start needing those big data type jobs. So that's a, a, a strong area of growth. 
And uh, of course, you heard uh, probably heard UTSA's down on campus. One of their uh, buildings or schools is going to be uh, centered on data science. So it's yeah. it's an area of uh, big growth. That'll probably be. I mean, one of the the number one um, new kind of science degree programs over the next fifty years will be data science, and we're just. Uh, beginning to get into this data revolution where it's it's now becoming very affordable for businesses of all sizes to uh, store information on everything that they do. And now the the computing power, if you have someone trained um, to be able to use that, is affordable to the point where you can mine that information and make better decisions more quickly um, and more affordably out of it. So if you went back 20 years ago, computers could store things, but we could really only store the most valuable stuff. So if you were going to store some data and it cost you a million dollars to store it and it cost you a million dollars to analyze it, then you better be making a decision that's worth at least $2 million. But now you can store information for hundreds of dollars. You can analyze it for hundreds of dollars. And now really almost all the decisions you're making inside your business should have some level of, of data tied behind it. And this is, uh, it all plays back together because if you're keeping all of this valuable information that's allowing you as a business to make better decisions, you need folks to keep it safe. That's right. So yeah. um, in the, the second half of the program, I'd love to, to dive into some of the specifics around uh, how you guys go through an, an, a degree program in, is it 28 months? 28 months. 28 months. So we'll, we'll go into some of the specifics about how does that happen without students burning out. And, and I know when, when I went to university, it's like, are you telling me to take 21 units a semester or something for, for two and a half years to graduate in two and a half years? Probably not. Uh, you didn't sleep in college anyways, right? No. So, yeah. yeah. So it, so we'll, we'll talk into some of the specifics about like what does that two and a half years look like through your life and, and how does that go in? But at, at a high level here before the break, yeah, how, how do you get a degree program done in two and a half years? Well, it's this really special magic called not taking summers off. That's that's really the uh, the shortest path there. It, if you know of any uh, careers where you get to take the summers off, there's not that many. Yeah. So we decided not to take summers off in college, and lo and behold, you get there in 28 months. Okay, yeah. So it's, it's not 21 units a semester. It's no. just it's regular class load. You just... Go to class yeah, year round. It's a it's a heavy class load, but yeah. it's but it's doable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So we'll we'll go into some more of the the detail about that, specifically on the cyber program and and what kind of coursework you're going to go through, what things are you going to learn. So Brent, you mentioned uh, during the earlier part of the program, the degrees are both available on campus or online. That's right. So how do you recommend to different students? Because my understanding pricing. Kind of the same for both, so you kind of take that out of the equation. It's not go online if you need to be cheap, go on campus if you can afford to. So how do you, you guide students through that process? Well, you know, some of it depends on what the uh, a student is after. So some some things like Cisco certification, it's, it's really best still to be uh, on ground. Uh, so, But you can cover the all of the networking concepts and and learn all of that and just not get certified and then move on into the uh, cyber areas of the bachelor degree. And, and so things like that uh, are, are good online. Yeah. And, uh, but it's a definitely a different student. If you're a hands-on uh, student, you should try to get on a non-ground program. Uh, but some students, they may have already been um, in, in IT for quite a while. And so they can handle being online. Or, or they're just sharp or they have access to, to the tools. So uh, being online, uh, for some students is is great. And so if you're you're going online, is it online on demand or is it online with a fixed course and fixed lecture schedule? So do you have to log in for 90 minutes on Tuesday from 10 a.m. to 1130 or how does that right. work different versus classroom and online? So so overall, the, the schedule uh, is the same as far as weekly, but it's asynchronous. So there are no lectures that you have to be at a certain time be attending. Uh, so you're covering your material in an asynchronous manner, you know, on your on your own time. The due dates are still about the same, though. So yeah. every three days, you're you're turning in a significant assignment. Yeah. So yeah, so that, I mean, that's one of the I think big benefits. Maybe if you are out there right. and you're a working professional, online would let you fit the coursework into your schedule. Versus on campus, if you've got a, a professor in the classroom, and you're showing up for class at 10 a.m. or you're missing the lecture. Right. And, and we also have evening. So we, we really have a, a variety of options. And, and often, you know, what a lot of our students do is uh, they'll come full time as a student only 
and what would be the equivalent of an associate's degree, and we have associate degrees as well. And uh, they graduate with that and get a career job, and maybe not a you know fully career job, but it's a great IT job. And then they switch over to evening while they're working their day job and uh, finish up their bachelor degree in the evening, or they switch over to online or something like that. So it's, we we you can actually switch uh, along the way, and we can uh, we've got a master's degree coming yeah. in cybersecurity. So stay tuned. As well. Yep, stay tuned. And so we can really work with an individual for many years and throughout their career. Yeah. So, it, and this is one, I guess, then per semester or quarter. Are you guys on a semester or quarter system? Well, so semester credit hours, but we do we do it in, in eight-week terms. Okay. And, and so instead of a 16-week semester where you're taking five or six courses, uh, every eight weeks you're taking three, okay. three courses. So you do that six times a year. Okay. And, and so could I go back and forth between on campus one one term and then online the next term you can you can it's, it's, it's one of it's, these this look at his face is like i we really don't recommend people yo yo back and forth like that that's right <laughs> yeah i mean you know change change is great uh in some cases but that that much change is is not great but you know sometimes your job uh especially if you're in a uh, work starting to work in a sock and, and yeah. you're having to cover 24 7 uh, time your shift change. So yeah, we work with students to be able to shift back and forth day and evening or things as needed. Yeah. I mean, I guess coming out of the, the health stuff as well, cause you, on that side, you've got many years of experience dealing with, uh, nursing and nursing schedules and folks starting off as a, a, a nursing assistant going up through to, uh, probably the nurse practitioner or whatever. And their schedule is going to change quite a bit during that whole program. Sure. Yeah. When you don't have any seniority, you're getting those, uh, those high value, uh, hours overnight. <laughs> yes. Uh. The good news is it pays well. The the uh, tricky part is, yeah, you're you're not in control of your own schedule. That's right. Yeah. So, uh, with this uh, cyber program now, so you guys have graduated your your first class or second class of of students. How how far through and how long have you been up and running? Well, you know, so we're, we're not in a, a traditional schedule. We yeah. we have class starts every eight weeks, so six times a year. Okay. Uh, day and evening, and and online. But that also means we have graduates coming out every eight weeks as well. So we've had uh, graduates starting to flow out of our cybersecurity program. And uh, so they come out every eight weeks. We just had a batch graduate last week. Okay. So then there'll be some some more graduates um, before the end of the year here then potentially. That's or right. Right yeah, around the two, end of the year. Two, two more sets, yeah. Okay. So uh, for the application process here, so if you're starting – new groups of students every eight weeks. Um, I guess if, if I'm in high school right now and I was thinking, you know what, it's this time of year, it's November, I've got to get my applications in for these these universities so I can yeah. start next June. It feels like y'all maybe move a little bit more quickly than that. We can. I mean, we can move very quickly, but it, this is still uh, the best time if you're in high school to uh, start taking a look uh, because especially for scholarship applications, um, you mentioned earlier CCDC and, and maybe we'll talk a little bit yeah. more after the break. Um, but we have uh, some scholarships that take a little bit of, of process and, and review. So it's, it's best to go ahead and uh, get in early and, and get your slot taken there. Yeah. And that yeah. CCDC is the collegiate cyber defense challenge. It's a, uh, the collegiate level of cyber Patriot. So, um, it's a national sport competition. Um, instead of getting your head banged around in a football helmet, which I did as a kid, um, they did not offer Cyber Patriot as a team sport when I was in high school. I wish they did. Uh, yeah, this is a, a chance for your, your kids to, to do that. And, um, yeah, they can go on. They can play that in high school. They can play that in college. And as uh, Brent's mentioned in there, if you wanted to get in for one of those scholarship applications, November here is now the, the time to, to fill that out and uh, to get going and get lined up there so you can uh, enroll and play and then the next season coming out here. Absolutely. Yeah, we don't have a football team no. so or, or a basketball team, but we do have a CCDC team. And so we give out the equivalent of athletic nerd scholarships uh, for the uh, Cyber Patriot uh, players coming out of high school. Yeah. So uh, we're going to take a quick break here uh, for those listening on the radio at 1200 WAI for a news, traffic, and weather update. If you're listening to us on a podcast on the rebroadcast or replay, uh, you will have a brief pause, and then we will cut right back into the program. If you uh, aren't going to be able to make it through that break with us, uh, you can listen uh, on Tuesday, November the 6th. It'll go up on the Internet at www.cybertalkradio.com. And uh, we will be right back after the break.
Welcome back to Cyber Talk Radio. I'm your host, Brett Pyatt, a 20 year internet security veteran. I'm joined this week by Brent Fessler, the president of Hallmark University. If you uh, just tuned in now, uh, we have uh, been talking before the break uh, for the first half of the hour about the history of Hallmark, uh, why they started the cybersecurity program. So if you stuck with us through the break, uh, we had promised we're going to dive deeper into the uh, Bachelor's of Science in Cybersecurity program at Hallmark University. Uh, it, d- going into some of the specific classes. So do you, do you have a, a favorite class? Or I know you, if, if you say that, it's kind of like having to pick a favorite kid. Cause, so let's not make you do that. So if you, you start off your first eight weeks, uh, what, are the, what are you diving into in a cybersecurity program? Yeah, so, I mean, you think of it like building a building. Um, you know, sometimes you don't get to the really cool stuff until later. And, uh, you know, you're, the studios here are downtown. And so whenever they're building a new building, it's like months and months and you see nothing. Yeah, right. Because see a hole in the ground. You see a hole in the ground. Uh, we we try not to do that. So uh, first term, you're jumping in, but you're jumping into foundational things uh, uh, in in the PCs, and and so you really think of it as as building a very complex and very broad uh, structure that that goes into a cybersecurity professional. Um, when we when we sat down with uh, industry to design this degree, I was really I, I was surprised at how broad they're looking for, but you really can't get around it. You, you think of all the disciplines that come together to make a good cybersecurity professional. Um, you, you're, you're not a uh, network administrator, but you need to know uh, how, how networks work in a very uh, detailed level. You need to know about firewalls. You need to know how, uh, how Cisco switches and routers are, are set up. Um, you're not a, uh, uh, a network administrator that needs to know how to configure Microsoft uh, servers and, and Linux servers, but you need to know because that's where all the data is going. Yeah. You're not a database administrator, but you've got to be able to dig in and get to the data. Uh, you're not a statistics major, but you got to be able to do some some pretty crazy math. And you're not a business major, but you have to understand why these services are are valuable. You know, that's one of the things in in Cyber Patriot, especially CCDC is you're, you're graded on how, what, what services you, you keep up, but, but uh, in, in a business network. Yeah. Right. But so every service is not the same. Some services are more important than others, more valuable than others. And so as a cybersecurity professional, you have to know what's valuable in a, in a, in a business. So you, you it's, it's crazy. You're, you're making a business professional, a database professional, a network professional, uh, an OS uh, professional, and, and you got to think like a bad guy. You have to be suspicious and, and all these things. And you put all that, you wrap that all up into a degree. So, so what, you, what I, I heard out of that, and I'll, I'll come back and ask this uh, a little bit of a different way. I'm not, my, my first eight weeks, are, it's not English one, college algebra one, and college history. Well, so first eight weeks, you're, you're getting through a, a, a success course, um, getting adjusted to, to college. And, uh, but you're jumping right into uh, uh, A plus course. And so IT fundamentals, you're, you're not going to be a PC technician, but that's kind of right of passage. You have to yeah. know um, how, how memory and how everything works in the PC. So you're, you're at least jumping in and not having to sit through uh, nothing but general education type courses. Yeah. 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 So while you, you guys uh, go through the program in, in 28 months, it sounds like you, you'll go through and you'll get a mix of what I would consider classes in your major and the extra courses you need to round out a full degree program all throughout each of the the, the eight week periods through the the twenty eight months. Right. Yeah. Being um, being a focused university uh, and not a liberal arts university, we don't have a huge core. Uh, we do have the liberal arts. You can't call it a degree without it. Yeah. And so, out of the hundred and twenty semester credit hours that make up a bachelor degree. At a lot of universities, 40, 50 of those hours are spent on core things that are uh, humanities or, or um, you know, political science. They're, they're important things, but they're not necessarily uh, making you a, a better cyber professional. So our degree, though, we have those things in there, but it's, it's 30. And so the other 90 hours are very focused. And so uh, you, get, you end up getting a lot more uh, focus and concentration on uh, IT and cyber, we can cram a lot more into that same bachelor degree. Yeah, because you're, it sounds like, yeah, I mean, 30 of the courses that you're taking uh, throughout the, the time are related specifically to your 
in your major and your degree track. Yeah, you might think, hey, 28 months, they're watering it down. It's actually the opposite. Yeah. yeah. So you turn the dial up to 11. Yes, 11 is better. So uh, from a, a, a funding perspective uh, on this as well, so as you, you've talked about the accredited degree and all the rest of these yeah. things, so if, I, yeah. if I'm a military veteran here in town and I've got GI Bill money, uh, we yes that uh, works we have actually in the cybersecurity program uh, over a fourth of our students are veterans and they're using their gi bill there yeah that's um, great. and any the other uh, federal financial aid uh, pell grants and those things our students are eligible just like any other university and you you have a, a financial aid office i would assume if someone needs help working through those things we do so uh, that's some of the uh, yeah. the most complicated paperwork if you can, if you can <laughs> fill out that that paperwork you can finish your your college degree program yes that that is the entrance exam if you yes. can get through the financial aid paperwork uh, no seriously our uh, our financial aid advisors are fantastic they consistently are, are getting the highest uh, customer service ratings from our students um, you know, all in a bachelor degree at Hallmark University is sixty thousand dollars. All in books, everything, bachelor yeah. degree, nothing, um, uh, nothing else, and that's in twenty eight months. And so, just dollar for dollar, it is very competitive with uh, even public universities. Um, but compared with private universities, we're very, very competitive, and that doesn't even consider the time value. You know, so think the the average bachelor degree now is almost six years that it yeah. takes students to get through. Uh, but even if it's four years and you get through in 28 months, you're talking about two extra years of getting into a forty, fifty thousand dollars, sixty thousand know, dollar a year career, and you've more than paid for. Um, if you had no uh, grants, if you had no assistance, you've more than paid for it by the time you would have graduated from a traditional program. Yeah, no, it's huge. I mean, this is one of the the things that's at the high school level where uh, they're starting to figure out. How do you do dual credit programs? How do you get folks to where they can enter college with many of that to shorten that degree cycle? Because that's the only way we're going to contain the cost of, of education here is by getting it down from the number of years you're spending in school. Because, I mean, just at, at six years for a degree, uh, that's six years you're earning pretty much zero income. You might have a part-time job, but it, it, six years of full-time, it, it, that – just even taking the cost of the school aside, the six years of not being in the workforce is huge. Yes. Yeah. That, that sounds like a parent's perspective there, Brett. Yeah. Um, I might be a parent with many, many children that are, are starting to reach that college age for <laughs> sure. Yes. Yeah, me too. Uh, so in this cyber program though, so uh, you're going to take classes immediately from the beginning uh, in your degree. Uh, what are some of the, the highlight courses as, as you go through this? So like a computer forensics? Sure. Um, yeah. And, you know, I, we, we, we try to, I mentioned earlier, using the same tools that industry uses. And so when we teach networking, as an example, we don't just teach the theory of it. We're a Cisco Academy, uh, because employers, they, they actually want to define their skill sets with certifications. And so we'll, we'll go through a whole Cisco suite, uh, Microsoft suite as well. Uh, Cause we're a Microsoft Academy uh, as well as CompTIA. And uh, so you're really getting that foundation laid uh, in your first two academic years. So really the first 14 months yeah. that, that you're going through uh, the program, you haven't really hit a ton of cybersecurity yet. They're, everything's cyber aware. Uh, but then after that point, yeah, you, you start hitting in a lot of the, the domains of, of CISSP and, and you're hitting cryptography and uh, hacking and countermeasures, uh, security and risk management, asset security, uh, security engineering and uh, identity and access management, those types of things, uh, security operations, you know, some of the uh, management side. Uh, there's there's a lot of domains that go into uh, cyber. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so the, the CISSP is, uh, well, for those uh, new to that, it's one of the um, longest standing um, cyber and information security certification programs. Uh, it's a certified information system security professional uh, and, and that it covers 10 domains of, of knowledge and across those 10 domains, uh, some of them even tie all the way back in physical security and everything else, because as, as I'm saying, when you're working on keeping systems safe and secure, you have to have a holistic, uh, ability to, uh, look all across up and down left and right uh, on these things, because the, the bad guys are out there looking for one flaw, one weakness, one exploit to get into the system. And, uh, that path that they're going to uh, walk along, if it's not something that you've ever studied or seen, then it's going to go 
uh, undetected by you, potentially by the security team that you're on, and that's where we uh, run into the problems out there. That's right. Yeah, sometimes you're looking for the bad guy, um, seeing if they've come in. Um, after they've come in, what do you do after they've come in? How do you recover from that, uh, the forensic side or the recovery side? Um, you know, I think often, Brett, cybersecurity gets grouped into this one uh, big bucket of cybersecurity, uh, but it, inside cybersecurity, there's a lot of variety, a lot of uh, detail into the different types of cybersecurity uh, jobs and positions, and, and they even have different skill sets. You know, uh, some are just like hunters, and, and you're you're the security guard trying to keep the the bad guys from coming in, but they are going to get in. You know, they say uh, uh, where there, there's two different types of companies, right? The, those those who have been uh, compromised, and those who just don't know that they've been compromised. Yes, yeah, yeah. and it's a and it's likely a, a true statement, or certainly on the side of at least those who have uh, been attacked, and those who do not know if that they've been attacked, uh, but that you have been. Um, I just I saw one I was uh, helping a friend with today. It was a really um, highly targeted spear phishing attack. Uh, looked very genuine. Uh, they forwarded over and said, hey, like, what do we do to stop this from happening? And I was like, well, I mean, you can stop using email um, or you can do some training for your staff to make sure. And then they caught it. Um, they forwarded it over, had that conversation, which is, is good. If you haven't heard of spear fishing before, it's not what you do um, down in the Gulf to catch fish. It's uh, one where Brent might be sending an email to his staff saying, "Hey, um, well, we need to place a new order for textbooks. I need you to uh, wire this money to our textbook supplier. Here's a bank account." Except that wasn't Brent sending that email, and that wasn't a real textbook supplier's bank account. Yeah, yeah, because I mean they know you're the president of the university. Like I mean we all have to be out there uh, right. on the internet. People know that I host this program. They know I'm the CEO of a company uh, here in town. So my staff gets emails from me all the time that aren't actually from me. Yeah, yeah. I mean you that's that is the the constant uh, struggle for a cybersecurity professional is you have to do business. You you can't just shut the thing down. You no. can't shut the place down. You have to know where the value is. And um, I, I think that's why our advisory council uh, from industry said we really need some business acumen uh, in our cybersecurity professionals. They need to know when they're recommending, you know, these security measures, what really is valuable to to our company, what's what's valuable to our business model, what can we just not afford to, um, you know, if we shut that down, if we put a big lock on our front door, well, we might as well just shut down and go out of business. Right. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I spoke at a, an event with uh, a bunch of uh, professionals, uh, so they're licensed professionals in their industry. I won't say which industry, but uh, asked yeah for folks, how many folks there had received a, a targeted phishing email? Everyone's hand went up. And then I said, how many? Now, those of you, um, if you would like to uh, just shut off email inside of your business, go ahead and keep your hand up. And every hand immediately went down. So, yeah, no one's going to give up the advancements of technology in, in that industry i mean they would go back to fax machines uh couriers for sending documentations back and forth or um yeah overnight um Pigeons. express delivery yes. yeah yeah i mean or you know, i mean that was what you go even back before the fax machine it really was uh, courier service everywhere before and and photocopies or typing pools no one's going back to any of that stuff again no 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 you just can't yeah so uh in this cybersecurity program, so you, you have folks uh, graduating all the time, and they're they're finding jobs. Oh yeah, they they are finding jobs. Um, there's uh, there's hundreds and hundreds of open positions uh, here in San Antonio, uh, just alone, uh, but yeah. all over all over the country. Um, it, but you know, it does bring up a point, and it's a challenge facing uh, higher ed in general, uh, and specifically in cybersecurity. So in a high, high growth, high demand industry that's changing so rapidly, the demand not the, the demand is there not for entry level, but for your mid and, and your high level professionals. And that's actually where the pain point is. Yeah. And so for all these open positions out there, it's surprising how few are actually entry level. And so it's, it's left higher ed trying to figure out, well, we're, we're putting all these skills and knowledge into somebody, but the employers are still looking for a lot of experience. It's something that you here at, at Jungle Disk have, have actually done a great job of, of creating your own pipeline and recognizing 
uh, we can't just depend on on somebody else to create all that experience for us. And and so you've you've been innovative there, but the rest. Uh, all of industry is not that way. No, and I'll, I'll pick, I mean, on, on one of our bigger cyber industries here in town, and, and I mean, we've had many guests in the program that will pick back on it, even people that are on the side of, of drafting these RFPs. Um, so, I mean, on the federal procurement side of things, whether it's Defense Department or just any other federal contract, they're asking these employers to staff with multiple years of experience in things potentially that it doesn't exist. I mean, it's like we want someone with uh, 10 years of Bitcoin experience. By the way, Bitcoin didn't exist 10 years ago. <laughs> so like you, you can't actually have that, but they want the manager of a team to focus on blockchain with 10 years of experience. So like the, the there's requirements that are getting written. The whole procurement process is a, a disaster. Hopefully you don't mind me throwing the procurement process under the bus here while we're on the radio together. But we've had on, um, the congressman heard from the, the 23rd district of Texas here. He's tried to introduce legislation to um, get some of that stuff changed, but yeah. we, we only have uh, out of all the folks in the current Congress. I don't know what we'll have after this next election um, that we're just having here, but uh, five folks with a computer science background out of the, the hundreds of folks back there in Washington, DC. Um, and you, you wonder why at the, the procurement doesn't work right. Oh, I mean, that's uh, some big chunk of it right there. Yeah. But, you know, higher ed can either just be frustrated with it or they can do something about it. And and I think that's that's one of the next uh, areas of innovation uh, for higher ed is figuring out how to uh, solve that experience gap, not just the skills and the knowledge or even the character gap. And and so we're, we're looking at some innovative ways. Uh, we do it in some of our other programs uh, by certainly getting the right tools, you know, so not not just being focused on theory, but having the right tools, you know, it, in, in IT. Um, having one of our students intern somewhere who not only knows the theory behind, um, you know, net masking, subnet masking for all you nerds out there, uh, but actually knowing how to log in to a Cisco router and, yeah. and knowing all the, the commands there. That That's huge, you know, because then you can put your knowledge uh, to use and that, that substitutes as experience for employers. The, the other things to do are to, um, and one of the things we're doing on the aviation side, we've, we've talked with... Um, manufacturers and, and maintenance uh, MROs, the maintenance and repair and overhaul stations, and uh, ask questions like, what are the top five things that you do? You know, so if you had an apprentice come in, what are the types of jobs that they would be working on? What would you have stuck them on? And so they would give us that list of five things. You know, maybe it's a, a turbine a overhaul or a or, or brake job. And so we bring that into our classroom and we can reproduce those four or five things so that our students are hitting the high points that they would be getting in an entry level job anyway. So you, you don't have to work that much harder. You just have to be a little bit uh, smarter and reach out in the industry more. Um, because, you know, that's that's what a good uh, manufacturer does is, is you gotta get in touch with your industry. You have to uh, understand what their needs are and and, and build it in. You, you can't just be frustrated, you know, at, at a customer being too demanding. You, you, you deal with it. Yeah, and, and I guess this is one of the other things I think that y you do from an innovation perspective that helps. So you could go through your first couple of years, end up with your associate's degree. You could do that on campus, yeah. and then you could go get a job, and you could either transfer tonight or online. And then by the time you get your bachelor's degree, you have a year and a half or two years of work experience in a professional setting. So you can check both that work experience box and the bachelor's degree box at roughly the same time. Well, I, I hope my son's listening. He is a, a freshman at, at Hallmark University, and that's exactly the advice that, that I'm giving him. Um, you know, in, in about uh, 12 months, he's going to be very, very employable uh, because of the experience that he has uh, in, in the classroom. And so get a, get a great job. Start building that experience. You get to know your employer. Um, and having a flexible educator is, uh, you know, just knowing, knowing what your students need yeah. as well and being able to work together with them. Yes. So uh, for this uh, season of uh, CCDC coming up, yeah. Yeah, so, uh, how's the, the team coming together? Uh, is there a, a position you're still looking to <laughs> fill? Because uh, we've got some listeners out there that are going to finish up high school here in the next seven months, and, and uh, some of them are on um, of the uh, all-star um, Cyber Patriot teams we have uh, in San Antonio. You, you know, Brett, I, we have a very diverse student population, and so a little, I'll let a little bit of the secret sauce out here. It, it's, it's incredibly valuable. Just our students in our, in our regular courses, 
uh, across the aisle, you've got a, a veteran who may have been shot at in Afghanistan six months ago. Uh, you may have a, a single mom. You may have a kid straight out of high school. Just a very diverse um, uh, population there. Well, that, that spreads into our CCDC team That's as awesome. well. So um, whereas maybe at a traditional university, you might have nothing but 19, 20-year-olds, which are awesome, um, but they're they're working together. Uh, our CCDC team may or may not have some cyber professionals who just never got a degree. So they've been out in industry and they wanted to come back and get their degree. And uh, so they've been dealing with the bad guys. And and so it's kind of like getting a ringer on your on your team. So oh, it's pretty cool. That's good. Yeah. So it sounds like you've got some uh, enlisted or uh, former enlisted folks that um, or current enlisted that are looking to go from enlisted to officer. I can neither confirm nor deny uh, yeah. that fact, Brett. Yeah, well, that's uh, that's good to hear. So uh, yeah, for uh, those out there, uh, there'll be a, a links in the uh, recap on the program uh, where you can learn more about the uh, Collegiate Cyber Defense uh, Challenge and uh, stay tracked and follow that league along. We need to uh, encourage uh, more folks out there to pay attention to this. Look, I, I follow the NBA. I spent this weekend watching some football and those things, and it's it's wonderful. It's great. It's entertaining. Um, but there's there's three million jobs out there in cybersecurity. Well, we've got to get kids excited about and uh, turn some of these ones who um, are doing a great job in cybersecurity in a competitive environment into their own sports celebrities so that the uh, those youngsters out there can have role models and see uh, where this goes and, and where this heads. I mean, from a, a cybersecurity perspective, um, information security managers, experienced professionals, uh, six-figure salaries, pretty common? Uh, they are, you know, not not right out of uh, school. No. And, and I think I think we'd be uh, misleading to try to say that, that that salary is available right out of school. Um, but, you know, it's there, and, it, and it's not too far out of school. And what you're making right out of school is not uh, bad. No, it's definitely better than ramen noodles and whatever uh, you might have been eating while you were in college. And, oh. and you know, for for every cyber patriot um, uh, player who uh, graduates high school and enrolls at, at Hallmark University, we have a six thousand dollar scholarship available. Um, that, and that's not for the CCDC team. We have some additional kind of like that athletic yeah. uh, scholarship that goes beyond that. Uh, but we have that six thousand dollars scholarship sitting there for every cyber patriot participant, and uh, so that's that's sitting there. So it'll take ten percent off the price of your degree. Yes, it's pretty awesome. Very awesome. So, um, other uh, things going on around uh, helping make all this stuff accessible. So I, yeah. uh, we were doing some research before the program. You've got some East Side Promise Zone Cyber Force program. We really do. Uh, you know, one of the things that uh, we we do great at Hallmark University is. Um, is making our education more attainable. And, and you do that without lowering the bar. But when we were doing a geo map of our population uh, a few years ago, we realized that there were certain parts of the city where it just didn't just have a dip, but we had complete holes in, in uh, where we were getting students from. And so in looking at that, we know the potential is there. Um, but the, the other factors that are causing those students not to pursue uh, a degree in cybersecurity. They they don't know about cyber. They don't they don't have any uh, folks living down the street. They don't have anybody in their family who's in cyber. So they don't have those examples. Um, the, those programs in high school are coming, but but they weren't they weren't there. So your eighteen to twenty eight year olds, the potential is there, but they don't know about it, and they or they don't know that they're capable of it. And so we have a uh, a brand new program. We're building out a, a classroom space at, at El Austin Community Center on the uh, east side of San Antonio right in the community of uh, some zip codes, the Eastside Promise Zone are those zip codes. And so those students are going to come in free of charge. And when they get accepted into that program, uh, they, they will go through a boot camp, uh, some certification courses that will get them down that road. Do, do I like I, IT? Do I like cyber? Answer that question and answer that other big question. Can I do this? And so once they get through that, they'll, they'll have both of those big questions answered. Plus, we have uh, partner employers who will have entry-level jobs waiting for them while they go into the second part, which is being accepted directly into this bachelor degree in cybersecurity. So we hope that's going to frame the pump and uh, in a community where it is currently not producing a lot of cybersecurity professionals. And, and they're close by. Yeah, you know, no, that's Those great. neighborhoods are very, it's closer than me driving from the north side of San Antonio. So it's, it's, we need to do that.
Yeah, no, it's uh, great to see you uh, supporting that and helping there. We've had some kids from uh, East Central ISD um, over here um, doing job shadow days and, and working with us, getting to see the, the recording studio and uh, getting to see what's going on here in downtown. So uh, hopefully between uh, all these outreach efforts, we can uh, get everyone in San Antonio uh, aware that there's more cyber jobs here uh, that uh, than we can fill. That's so, right. Brent, thank you very much for joining us on Cyber Talk Radio. Uh, if you uh, just tuned in right now and wondered what the heck we're talking about, go to www.cybertalkradio.com to learn.